Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill, and today we're going to look at uh, a devotional reading and dwell in it as God's people. Today is uh, Tuesday, October 20th, so happy fall. It is 10 20, 2020, um, and we're going to look at Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 through 30. So if you need to pause this for a second and then maybe pick out your Bibles and get that Bible verse out, uh, reading Daniel has got a full, rich uh, sense of history, but also of how God was acting through people and, and situations in a different time. So let us uh, look into this devotion for today. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He had ordered the furnace to be heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound and still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the fire furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the furnace of the blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that I threw into bound into the fire? And they answered the king, True, O king. And he replied, But I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they're not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace to blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their house is laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Quite a story. So as you dwell on this, what jumps out at you? What questions might this raise? And also what nudge might you feel as a person of faith in today's world as you read the story of an account of God being with God's people? So the phrase, a lot of phrases jumped out at me, but one in particular was uh, this one. But I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they're not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. I haven't looked this up, but I wondered if this is where that phrase comes from that we often hear, uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. And so I wonder if not only this is a, an incredible witness about God in this story, but if it could also be a metaphor for us today, uh, but an assurance that whenever we're in a, a tough situation where we feel the heat of life, that God promises to be there in the midst of us. And it can be astonishing to worldly people, like worldly kings even, like Nebuchadnezzar. But um, what a witness when we stick to what it is we believe. So this is a, a powerful story. And as you think about it today, um, think about our faith and what we're called to do. You know, standing on faith in the face of the ways of the world, as people say, is one way that we respond to Christ, um, who has given us this renewed life of faith that has purpose and that has hope for us, even in hopeless situation. Um, and the question could be, are we grateful 
in our thoughts or our words or our actions for this life of faith. The thing that might keep us centered while we're in the middle of a difficult time. Are we grateful for this sense of faith that gives us peace, that gives us a knowledge of God's presence and power in our life? Um, Martin Luther would talk about this, this new life of following the command of Christ, you know, to love one another. He would talk about it, I think, as I recall, um, as a uh, love bubbling over, that this, this gift of the spirit of, of God's love. You know, Jesus says, if you love me, feed my sheep, and I give you a command to love one another. Luther would say that this love in us is like a love that bubbles out of us, <clears throat> kind of like an effervescence. And a, a possible modern metaphor might be like a can of Coke or soda, uh, you shake it up a little bit, and you've got some kind of fizzy action going on. It's similar to the effervescence of Coke causing it to bubble forth or even, you know, spew out if you shake it. Does our zest for life of faith, does it fizz within us? Does it compel us to naturally be more uh, overflow with care for ourselves, or for other people or the world or the work that we are a part of? Or are we flat? like Coke that's been sitting out for a couple of days, that's been opened with no effervescence and a kind of a muted taste. And when I say flat versus effervescence, I realize that they're differing personalities. You know, some are extroverted, some are, are introverted. And it's not about acting like a fool to be like someone else. That's not it at all. It's about learning to come alive in who you are, to feel good in your own skin. I happen to have a Norwegian heritage, and I've done some testing on these, like Myers-Briggs, and I found out that um, I'm kind of a 60% extrovert, but a 40% introvert. And I can tell it sometimes. There are times where I just feel like I don't want to be so extroverted. I want to be more to myself. But um, I've been told uh, I have this Norwegian heritage. I'm a fourth generation Norwegian on my dad's side. And I've been told that this character trait that they have is sometimes of stoicism and sticking to your own business. Um, and it can be misunderstood or misconstrued for, for shyness. Years ago, I heard this following the, the, this joke about Norwegians by a professor, and it just kind of stuck with me. But it's, how do you tell the difference between an extroverted and an introverted Norwegian? The extroverted one is the one looking at your feet while you are talking. Ta -da -da. Um, they're not looking at their own feet if they were shy, but they're looking at your feet, which is that they're reaching out. But the thing is, don't mistake quiet and or reserve for lack of personality or ability. There are many people that I know that don't use a lot of words, but are very intelligent and bright. Um, and at the same time, don't mistake boisterous and outgoing behavior for ability. Um, who we are on the outside, it takes time to get across. It takes time to be recognized. That's why we get to know each other when we're... Um, when we find someone we're attracted to, the courting process helps us to figure out who that person really is, not just how they want us to see them on the outside. And so we do guard our true self. We do guard our heart for fear, maybe, that someone's going to see something about us. And our actions, though, do speak more truthfully than our words do sometimes. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, was a uh, was a poet, but also a theologian, um, and he said, Who you are speaks so loudly I can't hear what you're saying. That whole actions do speak louder than words. And today in the story, then, we see these actions of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they, it speaks volumes for who they are. They were not followers of Nebuchadnezzar who gave them this order to obey him and worship him, but they were followers of God. And in the face of worldly pressure, they leaned on their own understanding of God and acted on their belief in God, their personal creed or belief statement. And it was being spoken loudly from this fire, fiery furnace. Or as verse 28 put it, they disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. In other words, their faith was full of fizz and it wasn't flat. Wow, it's a pretty impressive story. You know, our daily decisions may not need to be so bold, but make no mistake, just as little steps in the wrong direction add up and take us further and further away from where we need to be, so do little steps in the right direction keep us on the path and push us further down the road. As members of the family of God, we have been given this new life and faith, 
And through baptism, we've been given the Holy Spirit to guard us and to guide this path. We might waver from time to time, but God promises to be steadfast, you know, our true north. And so we live out, as we live out this belief statement, this creed for us, we find that the promise of God for us to have abundant life comes true and life takes on purpose and meaning and a purpose and meaning that transcends what the world can offer. So whether you look at your own feet or the person uh, of the person you're talking to uh, or those of the person, the other person's feet, like the introvert extrovert joke, this faith that we've been given in God fills us up with effervescence so that our life overflows with goodness. And God promises to be with us no matter how hot it is. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this beautiful, cool fall day and for the gift of your life in Christ. Help us to walk and stand firmly in faith, living out our creed, our belief that we are your children and you will accompany us wherever we go. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day.